Hey, this is Crystal Vanessa with Mac Kiteboarding. Today I'm in Seattle, Washington uh, at Mount Baker, which is in the city, not in the mountains. And uh, I'm excited to be here. I'm visiting my sister, uh, doing some work on the businesses I'm working with. And uh, I am between two amazing kite spots. So Squamish, which is a few hours north near Vancouver, Canada, and then Hood River, which is a few hours south near Portland, Oregon. So those are two of the most popular kite spots in North America. And I'm excited to be able to check both of them out in the next two weeks. In this vlog, we're going to be covering how to pack your kite bag. I will be packing my kite bag, driving up to Vancouver tomorrow, and hitting up Squamish this weekend for some great wind. So let's go check out what my kite bag looks like. So I have a quite a bit of stuff to fit into my kite bag. So I guess the first thing to talk about when packing a kite bag is what kind of kite bag do you have or do you want? Um, a lot of people that are kiting will go with like a golf bag or a bag that can be disguised as a golf bag because airlines don't charge for those. Some airlines like United charge $200 for kite boarding equipment, which seems very unreasonable. So the bag I chose is pretty simple. Um, it's a Dekine Club Wagon. It's 155 centimeters, so it has the benefit of fitting both my kite board and my snowboard. Um, so I can actually carry them both at the same time, which is nice. It's pretty nondescript, like it has a logo of golf clubs on it, so, you know, kind of passed as a golf bag, uh, except that I can't actually lie to save my life. So when asked at the airport uh, what's inside the bag, I usually say um, it's a golf bag, and they're like, I know what's inside it uh, and I can't, I can't, I can't lie. I always say it's, it's kiteboarding stuff and most of the time they don't charge but sometimes they do. So nowadays I'm actually choosing airlines based on how I know they handle their baggage fees. All right so we've talked about packing our kite bag uh, and now I'm on my way up to Squamish. What's pretty exciting about Squamish is it's the nature lover's paradise. Like it's a stone's throw from Whistler, uh, the biggest ski hill in Canada. Uh, so great for snowboarder skiers, cross-country skiers, people who love winter. In the summer, Squamish is known for kiting, of course, kiting, windsurfing, and climbing. From Squamish, you can see a really beautiful rock face called the Chief, um, and it's really well known for rock climbing, hiking, and just being absolutely stunning in the backdrop of your kite spot. So let's go to Squamish. I've got a few more tips to share on how to avoid paying baggage fees and how to keep your bag under the 50-pound weight limit. We're here in Squamish. Uh, it is a quiet, rainy day, which is good. I think uh, the sky is going to be clearing out some of its drama for tomorrow and a week full of wind and sunshine. Um, I'm in front of the Chief, which is a climbing and hiking spot here, and looking down on the beautiful kite spot. Uh, right over there is where we'll be riding the rest of the week. So I wanted to share a few more tips about how to pack your kite bag and what you need to put in it. So uh, let's talk about your checklist. All right, if you're a kiter and you are fully equipped with gear, uh, when you're packing your kite bag, there are a few things you can't forget. First is your kite board. Second is your kites, obviously. A bar, a harness, and a leash are absolutely essential. Um, there are some things that you can live without, but I always recommend like a pump, some repair gear, um, a screwdriver, or whatever apparel you like to wear on the water. Not necessarily in your kite bag, but highly recommended. Stuff, stuff like sunscreen and zinc. If you're in a new kiter or kiting in a really difficult spot uh, and have some concerns, you know, I'd recommend maybe like an impact vest and a helmet. Um, you just never know. So here's how I pack my kite bag. Let's get started. The key is because it's an oversized bag, um, it can't be overweight also. A lot of airlines have a maximum weight restriction of 50 pounds before you're in the overweight category. If you have a kite bag that is oversized and overweight, the fees can get very, very expensive. So it's kind of a cold weather kite trip for me, so I'm bringing a five millimeter wetsuit from ION. Uh, I'm really excited, I just got it, and it's gonna keep me very, very warm in the cold waters of Squamish and Hood River in this spring season. It's also helpful to know what type of wind to expect at your spot so you know which kites to bring. I never travel with more than two kites because anytime I've packed three, I'm overweight immediately. So I really only travel with two. I have a six and a nine North Dice, and I chose those kites because they have great wind range and they apply to most of the kite spots I ride in. Um, on lighter wind days, like where I'd want a 12, I just don't ride. And uh, I actually enjoy the light wind days sometimes because if I don't have a kite for the conditions, I have a great opportunity to get some work done or go exploring. Never a bad thing. All right, so let's see what else we have. I have my harness and leash, obviously. Uh, my bindings are stuffed full of like handy things like um, an ace bandage, because you never know when you're gonna tweak a muscle. There's a screwdriver in there and my hardware, with oversized liquid so I don't have to have them in my carry-on. You can pretty easily find ways to reduce weight if you need to. 
Um, taking your kites out of the kite bag and leaving them at home or just taking one kite bag is probably pretty good if you're in a spot where you don't need to pack your kite onto the beach with a backpack. If you want to bring your kite backpack and you don't have room in your kite bag, uh, try it as a carry-on. They're pretty large and they work really well for carry-ons. I stick my backpack inside my kite backpack as well as like an extra jacket or wetsuit or a neck pillow for the flight. Um, and then I have the advantage of having my backpack at my destination, having a pretty badass backpack on the plane so all the other kiters can recognize me and we can get together and share a ride or whatever from the airport. So the WMFG tall pump is my pump of choice and I don't really need to go into more detail on that because if you've ever tried one, that's all you need to know. Harness is down there to protect, to protect the bottom. Wetsuit is in here to protect my board from scratches, which, you know, is a little silly because obviously I damage it every day when I'm riding, but <laughs> it's cool. All right, so let's see what else we have. My wake style bar, the bindings, which actually weigh a lot, so I often leave in a little extra room in my carry-on bag so that if uh, if I'm a little overweight I can stick my bindings in my suitcase or you know my bar. Woo! Done! Here we go. Too easy. Let's throw it in the car and uh, hit the road again. All right we're zipped up we're ready to go. Um, if you're getting on the plane the next thing you need to do is weigh your bag. Um, you can buy a really good luggage scale on Amazon for like ten dollars. Other ways to keep your baggage under 50 pounds. Oh, uh, wet kite gear weighs a lot more than dry kite gear, so keep that one in mind when you're packing up for your departure. Um, if I'm on a long enough trip, I try and leave a buffer day at the end of the trip where I can go and uh, you know, relax and explore, let my gear dry out and clean it and pack it nicely. Uh, but if you can't do that, make sure you leave some extra room in your carry-on. If you have bindings, uh, they are very heavy when wet, and I often take them in my carry-on bag. Same with my bar, it can weigh quite a bit if it isn't fully dried or just a bit in general. And I throw that one in my carry-on if I'm a few pounds over. So I think that uh, mostly covers it. My last and final tip is to know before you go. Research your airline, research the baggage needs, the weight limits, the restrictions, research the kite spot, know what sizes you want to bring. Um, preparation is everything. This has been Crystal Vanessa with Mac Kiteboarding. Happy packing and have fun on your next kite trip.